For many years, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has been known for being one of the most successful and innovative rockets in the modern era of spaceflight. It has also become a symbol of the commercialization of space. Despite its success, SpaceX still spent every waking second optimizing its rockets and operations to squeeze more performance and more cadence out of each part. The results can be only described as a resounding success. Just last weekend, the first of two Starlink launches in close succession, Starlink Group 5-4, lifted off at 12.10 a.m. Eastern. The mission broke the pad turnaround record for both Space Launch Complex 40 or SLC-40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, and the overall record across all three Falcon 9 launch pads. This definitely shocked the whole world, let alone the rocket industry. So, will the SpaceX Falcon team achieve its 2023 goal? And what difficulties did they experience while achieving this recent success? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon 9 made history last Sunday. The mission was SpaceX's 10th launch of the year, a pace of one launch every four days since January 1st. SpaceX is aiming to launch up to 100 Falcon rocket missions this year from launch pads in Florida and California. While teams in Texas are ready for the first orbital test flight, of the company's giant new Starship launch vehicle. SpaceX fired up the Starship rocket's Super Heavy Booster for a major ground test Thursday at the Starbase facility in South Texas. The booster ignited 31 of its 33 Raptor engines for a hold-down test firing, as SpaceX hopes to ready the nearly 40-story tall rocket for its inaugural launch later this spring. For Sunday's overnight mission from Florida, SpaceX employed its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket for another flight to deploy satellites for the Starlink Internet Network. With the 55 new satellites that traveled to space on Sunday's mission, SpaceX has now launched 3,930 Starlink spacecraft since the first prototypes in 2018. That number includes test satellites no longer in service and satellites that have already re-entered the atmosphere. Liftoff of the 229 foot tall or 70 meter Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station occurred at 12.10 a.m. Eastern on Sunday, defying a poor weather forecast to get off the ground before rain showers and brisk winds moved through the spaceport with the passage of a frontal boundary. The 55 Starlink internet satellites mounted on top of the Falcon 9 rocket headed into an orbital plane that is part of SpaceX's second generation Starlink network, Gen 2, or Generation 2. Sunday's mission, known as Starlink 5-4, followed the first three Starlink launches into the Gen 2 network in December and January. The launch occurred five days, three hours, and 38 minutes after SpaceX's previous mission from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral, which carried a Spanish-owned communications satellite into orbit. That set a record for the shortest turnaround time between SpaceX launches from the same pad as the company continues to ramp up its blistering launch cadence. At such extraordinary speed, SpaceX's target of 100 launches is more realistic than it seems. Announced last August, Musk's 100 launch 2023 target followed goals of 52 and then eventually 60 Falcon rocket launches in 2022. Both 2022 goals were incredibly ambitious, with 60 requiring SpaceX to almost double its previous annual launch record. But for the first time in its history, SpaceX not only met, but exceeded its executives' forecasts. The company launched 61 times in 2022, tying a four-decade-old Soviet record for the most launches of a single family of rockets in one year. Anywhere close to 100 Falcon launches in 2023 would crush that record. Prior to 2022, however, SpaceX infamously struggled to hit the high bars set by its ever-optimistic executives. Only in 2022 did all of the puzzle pieces finally click together. Representing the payoff from years of buildup, SpaceX doubled the production of Falcon rocket stages and Starlink satellites, 
dramatically increased the availability of its drone ships and launch pads and launched once every six days without a single failure. Ever the glutton for self-punishment, Musk responded to SpaceX's success by raising 2023's bar to two-thirds higher than 2022's in August. Instead of jinxing the company, SpaceX somehow sustained its high cadence through the end of the year and slightly surpassed Musk's 60 launch goal. In fact, the pace of SpaceX launches accelerated throughout 2022. SpaceX even launched 13 times in the first quarter of 2022. But by the fourth quarter of 2022, SpaceX launched a total of 18 times, an increase of almost 40%. The same trend is visible on a smaller scale. In December of 2021, SpaceX launched five times in one month for the first time in its history. SpaceX launched seven times, also a first, in December of 2022. However, one exceptional month does not necessarily translate into an exceptional year. SpaceX launched seven times in January of 2023, implying that it could be the company's new normal. When SpaceX first launched five times in one month back in December of 2021, it seemed unlikely that that would become its new normal. But SpaceX ultimately averaged more than five launches per month throughout 2022. Obviously, SpaceX has a talented and dedicated team of engineers, technicians, and other professionals who are committed to pushing the boundaries of space exploration. For the latest flight, the launch team was stationed inside a launch control center just south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station for the overnight countdown ahead of Sunday's flight. SpaceX began loading super-chilled, densified kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the Falcon 9 vehicle at T-35 minutes. Helium pressurant also flowed into the rocket in the last half hour of the countdown. In the final seven minutes before liftoff, the Falcon 9's Merlin main engines were thermally conditioned for flight through a procedure known as chill down. The Falcon 9's guidance and range safety systems were also configured for launch. After liftoff, the Falcon 9 rocket vectored its 1.7 million pounds of thrust produced by the nine Merlin engines to steer southeast over the Atlantic. The Falcon 9 rocket exceeded the speed of sound in about one minute, then shut down its nine main engines two and a half minutes after liftoff. The booster stage separated from the Falcon 9's upper stage, then fired pulses from cold gas control thrusters and extended titanium grid fins to help steer the vehicle back into the atmosphere. Two braking burns slowed the rocket from landing on the drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas around 410 miles or 660 kilometers downrange approximately eight and a half minutes after liftoff. The reusable booster, designated B-1062 in SpaceX's inventory, completed its 12th trip to space Sunday. The Falcon 9's reusable payload fairing jettisoned during the second stage burn. A recovery ship was also on station in the Atlantic to retrieve the two halves of the nose cone after they splashed down under parachutes. Landing of the first stage on Sunday's mission occurred just as the Falcon 9's second stage engine cut off to deliver the Starlink satellites into a preliminary parking orbit. Another upper stage burn 54 minutes into the mission reshaped the orbit ahead of payload separation. Separation of the 55 Starlink spacecraft built by SpaceX and Redmond Washington from the Falcon 9 rocket was confirmed 63 minutes after liftoff. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.